The next one, let's do medial lateral calcaneal. So lay on your side for me. So with you in this position, ideally you want this to be a firm surface. So this is not ideal, so this is really just for quality video footage that I'm going to put this under here. And the reason you want this to be a firm surface is because you don't want, when I'm pushing like this, you don't want you know, it to be on a different angle. So ideally this would be firm. When you're doing the uh, subtalar glide, you can be on the calcaneus and you want to stabilize the tibia and fibula, give a little bit of a distraction, body over top, straight arm, and you are trying to, you give a, a little bit of distraction to the calcaneus, and then you're just drawing this straight down. So if they have a limitation in inversion or eversion? This is eversion. He'll be, a, in a sec, he'll flip over. He'll do, or we'll just do the other foot. So that is for eversion restriction. You can do the same technique with a scoop again, or scooping, and then you could just draw this straight posterior. Scoop, posterior. Just two different hand positions for the same thing. Would you do this to someone? Like, if he had a previous ankle sprain, would you avoid doing this, or could you still do it? Well, this is for eversion, so I guess technically this one's good. But we, we don't care so much about what the injury is. What is their restriction? If they are restricted in eversion, like he is, this is going to be important. So, you know, you don't want to get too caught up with a label. Get caught up on what do you find. So this one is eversion. Great. Now you're good. Wait, where am I going? Okay. Don't move. Okay. <laughs> Real life. Today. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Bend the knee. Bend the knee. <laughs> Stay on the side. Stay on the side. Give right it like the left. Like, there you go. I did. <laughs> go to sleep. <laughs> so this one you don't need a surface because now you're flat against the table. It's the same exact concept, just you don't need to have the surface. But you're now pushing laterally. So you stabilize, you distract, come on top, and then you're going straight down to a lateral position. You could do the same arc motion as well. You're here, you scoop, and you could push the calcaneus straight down. So that's just a preference thing, that doesn't matter. This one's pretty comfortable. So we're here, distract, scoop, push down. This one you'll probably do less than the other one because we commonly don't have inversion problems. Same reason with plantar flexion. You commonly won't do a plantar flexion mode, but you still need to understand how to do it. Good on those? So we'll practice those in a second. Just lay on your back, please. <laughs> <laughs> or sit. <laughs> so for the first array, that is um, metatarsal going into medial or first cuneiform. So this is a planar joint. We want this first ray proximally to be able to move inferiorly for us to be able to move this into extension. So we're going to learn an inferior glide of your first ray. You could take the same concept. If this moving down does this, then this moving up at the MTP also does extension. So for a toe extension, we're either doing inferior first ray, dorsal, uh, MTP. For first ray, all you do is palpate up the metatarsal until you get to the cuneiform, then you know you're off the spot. So just go to the top of the metatarsal, so your hand is on the metatarsal. This hand, you put your thenar eminence, you wrap it on top of the other one, and you just glide um, plantarly. And that's it. If you get to the end range, you could do a thrust as well for this one. Can you do that? How? You just push real quick. So we have just our normal grade of mobs. Great. 
If you want to do a thrust, you just go to the end range and then it's a quick thrust at the end. For the MTP, stabilize now the distal metatarsal, get onto the proximal phalange, and now you're just drawing this dorsally. You usually use a key grip for this. And then when you want to move towards extension, you just change your treatment plane. You have a little distraction, and then it's just a dorsal glide. If he wants to curl his toes in the sand, now it's going to be a plantar glide. So once again, for MTP extension, what are my two options? First and And then MTP dorsally, and then to curl in the sand, plantar at the MTP. Good. And that's it. We already did anterior and posterior fibular glides, so I think. We did approximately it's the same exact thing distally. The one reason I would say for a posterior glide is commonly a positional fault of the fibula uh, gets pulled forward when you have chronic ankle sprains. So someone who has laxity, chances are this needs to get pushed back. So that's one thing that you'll see. So you're pushing it posterior, you're taking the, uh, you're pushing it posterior? Yeah. Okay. Technically you could do anterior for um, plantar flexion. And you could do that just like Dr. R showed for the knee. It's easiest to do on your side where you're pushing it uh, anteriorly. Does this one follow all of the posterior and anterior glides? It's just straight posterior. I never do those subtle changes. Straight, straight posterior. Straight posterior. It's only for the proximal? Yeah, it's, it's not a convex concave application to the distal oh, yeah. fib joint. It's the same as So it's just the position of length. <laughs> Proximal there is a complex Okay, so once again, we got the the inversion one, the eversion one without having to move. We have the first ray, first metatarsal for extension, dorsal, for flexion, plantar, fibula, posterior. Great. <laughs>